It doesn't really matter to me if the comic book market influencers say the market is down because strong comic book values are always relative. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video and uh, it's a little bit uh, different. Um, yes, I'm still opening the mail. <laughs> yes, there are comic books inside of the package, but um, this is going to be a tough one. I found this particular seller on Atomic Avenue, which I've purchased from in the past, and I noticed uh, the seller's name looked familiar. And so I looked up the seller and realized, oh, it was a, um, it's, he's related to the other seller, um, their brothers. I want to go ahead and unbox these comics and I want to share the, uh, the little, um, sort of about page for the store, uh, so that you can kind of get the background and get the context of this. But before I do that, like, it just reminds me, like, it almost like kind of, it brought me back down to earth a little bit and grounded me and, and just made me really think about why I'm in this hobby. And, and I was getting kind of frustrated, again, having to see influencers and, and other comic book media personalities and just how, how they behave and how they treat the hobby. Um, and when I see a situation like this, uh, where, um, you know, and, and you'll, you'll see the story, um, I just, it makes me kind of step back for a second and really think about why I love the hobby, why am I into it, um, am I always approaching it in the right way, an honest way, uh, a way where I feel like we're all kind of learning from each other, we're all collectors, we're all enjoying the hobby, uh, we're loving this era that we live in where we can see characters literally leap off the page and show up on a giant IMAX screen. Um, and sometimes when I see these personalities, just, uh, I don't know, sometimes I feel like they're even abusing the hobby. Uh, I place orders like this. I, I, I find sellers that I like. I find sellers that have great back issues from silver bronze, uh, early copper age. And it just, it sort of like cleanses the palate in a way. I don't know how else to describe it. I want to get to the unboxing uh, so I can get through the order. Um, I'll share the story with you, but I don't know. There, there was something about this experience that, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here going, well, is this a good value buy? Is this, is this book going to have potential? Is it a speculation book? And I'm getting caught up doing the same thing. And at the end of it, it's just a matter of just kind of reminding yourself as far as like, why do you collect? Why do you enjoy the hobby? Um, and so this is sort of like a reset order. I, it, it's not like making me change kind of my philosophy or my approach to the hobby and, and sort of my, my analytic uh, sort of approach and how I attack everything, uh, that's not going to change. But it does make me think a little bit differently. Sometimes, you know, you'll see a book and it's like you sometimes you see dollar signs. Sometimes you see books and you think of your childhood. Sometimes you think, um, you know, maybe another era in your life um, and so on. It's just, it, for me, comic books unlock memories. They're, they're treasures, these stories. I remember where I was when I first read a particular story and so forth. And I get caught up in all of it. I get caught up in the hobby. I get caught up in the hype. I get caught up in, like, I, I try and watch the, the Disney Plus shows as early as possible in the day because I want to avoid spoilers. And sometimes it, that whole experience of trying to rush through um, an episode Sometimes it even ruins it for me. So this is really just kind of an order that is making me uh, respect the hobby for what it is, respect 
the members of the community, the collecting community, the experienced members of the community. Um, and I don't know, it's just making me um, just, again, feel a little, bit, a little bit more grounded and a little bit be more realistic with it um, and, and treat the hobby with respect. I, there's always a, a, a saying where if you respect the hobby, it will respect you back. Um, and that's just kind of a, I think, a good theme for this unboxing. So let's get to it. Let's open it. Let's see what books are inside. And I will at least compare, you know, what I spent uh, for the books against fair market value. So you can see why I at least targeted the books. Uh, but now uh, also I think you'll see why maybe my perspective has uh, been a little bit adjusted. All right. So here is the, uh, the order from Professor's Comics. Um, and uh, I'm going to just open this real quick, and then I'll tell you the quick story uh, about this particular seller. Uh, it's quite interesting. Um, Professor's Comics um, is the brother of Capco Comics on Atomic Avenue. So let me open this and stay tuned for that quick story. Okay, it looks like the tape monster got me on this one, so um, I'm going to have to kind of peel off some of the books here one at a time. Uh, while I do that, let me go ahead and uh, read kind of the, the little blurb about uh, this particular seller. So again, this is uh, Professor's Comics on Atomic Avenue. So I'll kind of read as I open here. So these comics are from the collection of my brother, Professor Comics. Sadly, he passed away in November of 2021. He was known as Professor Comic uh, because for 10 years he was flown weekly from the Denver, Colorado area to San Francisco to teach classes in the history of comics at the Academy of Art University. He and I started reading and collecting when we were about 9 and 10 in 1958. He grew to love the genre very much. When we were young and could, we would go to the used bookstores downtown and buy pretty much anything we did not already have. This is why some of our earliest books are in poor condition. We just wanted to read the stories. That, and because at that time, early 60s, no one knew of boards and bags. In 1967, Kevin attended the New York Comic Con, where he pawed around with a couple of other young men he met, Marv Wolfman and Len Wein. While there, they visited the DC studios, and they saw a young artist drawing a new character named Dead Man. Yes, that was indeed Neil Adams. From 1981 to 1985, Professor Comic hosted the Denver area's first cons, the Colorado Comic Art Conventions. His guests included Kirk Allen, Gil Kane, Joe Kubert, John Severin, Michael Golden, and Larry Malstead, among others. Several years ago, Kevin and I started a group that meets every other Friday at a local establishment to discuss all things comic-related. In fact, it is called Group, Greater Rockies Organization of Ultimate Panelologists. We talk about the comics, writers, and artists, the movies and shows, and pass around recent acquisitions or favorites. After eating true to his moniker, Professor Comic would have a test for us about the characters and maybe even their horses or other animals or sidekicks. No one ever received a perfect score. If you'd be interested in ask, I would include an example in an order. All this to say that he and I have really enjoyed reading, collecting, and contesting through the years, and my other brothers and I hope that we can find good homes for Professor's Comics books. And that was written by his brother, Mark, who runs Capco Comics on Atomic Avenue. So, uh, uh, just, it pulls at the heartstrings. That's super awesome, and uh, gosh, like again, this is kind of where it's at, right? I mean, instead of talking about the next new comic book to flip, um, I just want to take a moment and enjoy these comics. 
And, you know, these all now are taking on an additional meaning for me because um, these came from that Professor Comics collection. And, and now I've, I've taken them on as mine. They're part of my collection. Um, I care very, very much for my collection. I, I curate and I, I care for and I grade um, and I store and, and I catalog and I spreadsheet and I do all of this. And so I hope that I am worthy of, um, you know, these comics having moved on to, um, you know, a good home, as, as his brother mentioned. Um, hopefully I'm, I, I can be worthy of that. So let's go through these books and let, let's, um, let's just see what we got and, and take a look at the grades and then I'll give you the little order summary at the end. Uh, but boy, um, what a great story. Uh, I appreciate Capco Comics for sharing that. So let's get to the books now. Here we have uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number 22. And some of these books are back to back, so I'll just kind of turn them over. Um, this one, uh, this is uh, Dave Cockrum on cover art here. Uh, great Spider-Man uh, Moon Knight cover, uh, early Spectacular Spider-Man from 1978. And what I'll do is I'll kind of call out the grades um, as they were described on Atomic Avenue. Um, so this one was listed in a, a very fine minus. I think what I can tell is there is a crease running down the middle of the book. Uh, and there is a little bit of color breaking in there, uh, but looks to be pretty good otherwise. All right, on the reverse side, uh, this is Iron Man 161. Uh, I was buying these, I think, while I was watching um, <clears throat> uh, sort of the tail end of the Moon Knight series on Disney+. Plus. But um, I don't know if this is um, a great matchup or a great team-up, I should say, Moon Knight and Iron Man. Uh, we've got the latter here, so I imagine Frenchie and his helicopter is somewhere up here, but I believe this was listed as near mint. Spider-Woman number eight. This is from 1978. Um, this was listed in a fine, very fine, uh, early single-digit uh, Spider-Woman, uh, Carmen Infantino on cover. And then on the flip side, um, this is Uncanny X-Men 160. Uh, I just posted this uh, as a value pick, uh, and I forgot that I ordered this. Um, I did pick this up. I believe it was in uh, listed as near mint. Um, from Professor Comics, and uh, however, I think the the target price was a lot less, I, I, I believe, um, than what I paid for this um, from Professor Comics, but regardless, um, this is the first appearance of Ilyana Rasputin, otherwise known as Magic, and it's in her sort of adolescent or adult form. Uh, she first appeared in Giant Size X-Men, uh, but she was a baby, um, so if you're into baby spec, that's the one to get. I'm sure there are collectors out there that collect the first appearance of characters as infants. Uh, I am not one of those. Um, I prefer the uh, the full size uh, person or or alien or human or whatever species. Um, but um, certainly first full grown or first in costume is my preferred spec, and not uh, infant spec or newborn spec. But anyway, um, so it's Colossus's sister, Ilyana, otherwise known as Magic. Uh, love Magic as a character, um, love the actress that played her in New Mutants, so hopefully she gets to continue uh, with that role going forward. Uh, the Son of Satan, number one. Uh, this one uh, was listed in fine, very fine. Um, it does have some spine ticks, as you would expect in that grade. Marvel Team Up 24, I talk about these books a lot. Um, these are just great. This is from 1974. Tape Monster got me still. There we go. Um, team up of Spider-Man and Brother Voodoo. So um, just, I think I'm just sort of picking up the Marvel team ups one at a time again. So here I go with one issue at a time. But uh, 25 cent cover here as well. Um, this one was listed near mint. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. It looks like it has a little bit of a... Uh, color break there by the staple. Um, another one in the middle, but looks to be in pretty good shape, at least through the bag. Uh, maybe a little bit of creasing here 
on the side, but uh, pretty good otherwise. Uh, on the back is Incredible Hulk number 122. This is from 1969, uh, Silver Age book, uh, listed, I believe, in fine, very fine grade. Uh, it does have a, a, a crease, a color breaking crease, where it looks like the page was folded over right in there. But it's, it's subtle. It's, uh, I think, because of the coloring in the book, you don't really see it right in there. You kind of get a better look at it there. Um, but pretty cool. It's a Fantastic Four uh, on the cover with Hulk. Herb Trimpe on art, on cover art there. Uh, I mean, I couldn't pass it up. Um, it, it was good price. Uh, Silver Age Hulk. This is my first Silver Age Incredible Hulk book. So happy to own this one. All right. Move on from some of this tape again. Uh, I was kind of drawn into Adventure into Fear with Fear 11. Uh, and started to take a look at some of the other issues. And this is uh, either Fear 23 or Adventure into Fear 23. Um, we know the Morbius movie. It is what it is. Uh, I don't have a lot of Morbius books. Um, and not that I got caught up in Morbius spec at the time. But uh, just trying to, you know, keep my... Keep rounding out my collection, and again, if I was, I was kind of starting to track the adventure into fear books, and that that's typical. Uh, that's typically something that happens where, if there's a particular book that, you know, catches my interest, and it's of a particular series, what I'll end up doing is I'll I'll track the books around it. Uh, so it was Fear Eleven, and then I noticed that. Um, Mile High Comics and Atomic Avenue and some other places, they had uh, back issues of fear. And I went ahead and add them to the tracking system. And then again, as um, I input the data, uh, if books jump out at me as having value like this one did, then I go ahead and pick them up. So this was uh, listed in Very Fine Plus. Um, this is a very nice copy. Again, that 25 cent cover, um, just incredible, 1974. Check this out. This is Batman 217, Silver Age Batman. And I think this might be my first Silver Age Batman book as well. Um, so this one, it, it does have some wear and tear here. Uh, you can definitely see that up and down the spine. So um, we're not getting these in all in near mint. We know that. But uh, just, again, very cool that um, it was listed uh, that Professor Comics had it, um, and I can't wait to rebag and board this um, in a nice, brand new, maybe even a Mylar. So, uh, really awesome to have this one. Fantastic Four 185. Uh, this one, the f <laughs> if you're thinking, if you're going way back to WandaVision, there is Agatha Harkness right on the cover. She has Franklin. Um, it's also the first appearance of her son, uh, Nicholas Scratch, which there was some speculation that the, the rabbit, uh, Mr. Scratchy, was going to somehow transform into her son or something. And I remember totally FOMOing over this book um, and probably paid at the peak for it, uh, unfortunately. And now, of course, people have kind of forgotten about it. However, Agatha is getting her own show. Mr. Scratchy could make a return. You never know. But this is fantastic for um, 185. And it's still, I guess, considered a key for that reason. But, you know, we'll see. On the reverse is Fantastic Four 180 uh, from 1977. Um, this was listed in Near Mint Minus. So I am really, really curious to see um, just what the flaws are on this one. This looks gorgeous. Uh, very nicely wrapped as well. It's just super cool. Uh, great, great cover. Just action-packed, just great, nostalgic, fantastic four. I didn't have, I did have a 185, I didn't have 180, so I get to add that to my run of fantastic four. All right, uh, this was really cool. Um, Daredevil 81, and this was, uh, this is from 1971. This was listed uh, in fine, very fine. Um, we have Black Widow right there. Um, 
Daredevil's kind of laid out underwater, I guess. Um, but wow, just a, an amazing book. Um, also wrapped really well. So you've got the sort of square boundish type of comic here. Um, <clears throat> and all of that's right, uh, right on the spine the way that you like to see it. So wrapped really well. Um, just the colors. Look at these colors too. Just jumping out. Uh, and this is with an older bag as well. So as soon as I replace this, it's going to pop even more. But um, what a great book. That is awesome. So I just feel so fortunate to now um, have these in my possession to be able to, to take ownership of them. So very cool. Fantastic Four 96. Uh, this one from 1970 was listed as fine, very fine. Um, and, you know, Silver Age and everything, I, I try to um, see if I can get books that are, you know, either single digit books or maybe under 100. So like Amazing Spider-Man, the original series, like targeting books less than 100. Like I, I talked about this in the past, like eventually even the non-keys are keys. Um, so I, I like buying the non-keys uh, of the silver and bronze age, because to me, they're, they're all significant. Um, even though technically in like in an app or a database, they're not keys, but I don't care. Um, this next one's got some additional tape on it. Get that off. Uh, it's Captain America 114. Uh, another silver age book. John Romita on cover. And this one was listed as fine, very fine. Um, and let me talk about that real quick uh, as we look at it. Um, you know, we got Steve Rogers, Man Behind the Mask. The typical wear and tear that you'd see, but, um, you know, really in, in great shape. Um, this is super, super tough in Silver Age. I mean, this is just a jet black um, portion of the cover that's just asking for trouble. Um, so you'd see kind of wear and tear typical like that. But for the most part, it's pretty clean other than that corner. What I like to do is if I'm going to buy raw, uh, I like to actually target 6.0. I like to look at fine. Um, to me, I think if I were to get those books rated, a 6.0 still presents very well. And there's a, there's, a, there's a tier of affordability in that range. And then, you know, maybe I'll take a step back. Um, like I did with X-Men 101, and it, and if since it's graded, I'll, I'll go with a 5. But 6.0 is kind of that target grade that I look for. Um, I'll do this with Heritage Auctions. So if I ever see any raw books there, um, ungraded books, and they're listed FN 6.0, um, I always kind of click into those auctions and take a look. On the back side, um, and I'm not going to say... That I'm not a Conan collector. I'm, I'm a Conan collector now. Um, this is Conan 17. Uh, this one is, um, you know, it has the, it's a framed cover. Um, so these are desirable. There are framed cover collectors. Uh, this was listed fine slash very fine. Um, so again, that 6.0, 7.0 type of, of range. Those are the raw book grades that I look for. Um, and really not bad. I mean, again, you've got that solid jet black with not that many, uh, you know, just I'd say like it's like a sort of a sprinkling effect of around the, the spine and the edge, but really no like jagged, sharp color breaks. Again, a little bit of fold down there in the corner, right in there. But again, that's to be to be expected, I would say. So really happy to get this. Um, and I want to uh, also get in there and grade some of these too. To see if it's, uh, you know, it holds up at that 6.0 or 7.0. Last book, Amazing Spider-Man 201. Um, any early Amazing Spider-Man with Punisher. Uh, it's not 129, obviously, but uh, love picking those up. Um, it does have, I just noticed, it has writing on the cover there. So that's unfortunate. Um, I don't believe that was disclosed, but uh, that's okay. Uh, John Romita on cover again with the Punisher there. So, um, boy, <laughs> it's weird. Like, I want to say these are great books. Uh, there's part of me that feels a little bit guilty that I have 
comics that were owned by uh, such a, a special individual, um, somebody that was revered in his own community um, and had those early interactions with um, some of the, the, the greats, the legends of the industry. Now with Neil Adams passing, um, there's just some great connections and history in these books. So um, I will handle them with great care. Um, I will catalog them. I will get them into my collection. Um, and I will show you now what I paid for these. And then we can kind of assess uh, whether or not, um, you know, it was worth it. But part of me is like, I don't really care about the money now. I, I just feel like um, I'm just very fortunate and lucky to be the owner of these books. Uh, let's take a look at the numbers and just see um, how they stack up. And then also, let's see if it's worth it if I were to send any of these in for grading at their current grades. All right, here is the order I placed with Professor's Comics uh, from April 17th, 2022. It was a $275.81 order. I paid $21.06 for shipping. Um, I basically took my experience with Capco Comics, who is a fantastic seller on Atomic Avenue, um, who does not offer free shipping. Um, and it's a seller that I get great books from, and I do not mind whatsoever paying for shipping. So that is something that... Um, when you take this sort of empirical approach to comic book collecting, um, you understand that uh, if you have somebody that you believe in as a seller who's going to send you good books, um, then I think it's worth it. You're, you're paying, you know, you're making sure that they're not losing any money on shipping, uh, whereas other sellers maybe they're possibly overgrading and they're giving you free shipping and then, you know, it just kind of works out. Uh, it, it sort of evens out, I would say. In this case, uh, again, I don't mind paying the shipping. Uh, this was my first order with uh, Professor's Comics. Um, and again, I just sort of assumed since his brother was running his store that I would get the same quality. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but during the unboxing, he had created his own like cardboard holder that securely held all the books in there um, so they were not damaged in transit and I love that so I really appreciate that and I don't mind paying uh, for that now um, if we look at the total cost um, what I ended up doing is distributing the $21.06 across all of the 16 books um, so that the total 275.81 matches up here now uh, for raw value in column double a uh, just again, looking at cover price, fair market value. Uh, and again, it's relative with age, meaning, you know, a silver age book, the fair market value is probably mid grade, uh, you know, four to six roughly. Um, and then as we get closer to, uh, the current year, uh, fair market value is always assumed, I think to be probably nine, six. Uh, so, um, I trust, you know, buying fine or very fine books from silver, bronze, early copper, and then comparing the purchase price with cover price fair market value to kind of justify the purchase. That's how I kind of see it and how they line up. So from a raw FMV perspective, that's column double A, um, I've added almost $43 of value to my collection. Um, Looks like the big loser here for me was Fantastic Four 185. For some reason, I keep getting, um, I don't know, I, the, is the WandaVision FOMO? I don't know what it is, or, or Agatha, or because Wanda came back in Doctor Strange, then it was on my radar again. I don't know, but it was a, uh, a $29.32 purchase, um, and uh, it has a fair market value of $12.34. Again, I still feel like it's a longer term hold anyway. It's not that big a deal for me. Uh, again, I don't flip these books, uh, especially knowing the source, I'm gonna hold on to these. But uh, at any rate, um, that was, I, I did overpay for that one. Um, let's see, overpaid for Marvel Team Up 24 by $6. Fantastic Four 180 by $7.07. .07. Um, but then it sort of, uh, evened out again, the big winner here, Amazing Spider-Man 201, that, uh, cost me $13 and 32 cents. Now I didn't realize at the time that was writing on the cover, you know, so it's not, not near mint, of course. 
Um, but still, raw has a $31.10 value it, um, based on cover prices, fair market value. Um, Daredevil 81 paid $23, um, has a $31 fair market value, so a nice $8 gain there. Um, $7.45 gain on Incredible Hulk 122, I paid $37, fair market values almost $45. Um, and almost a $10 gain on Son of Satan, $14.32 cost for an almost $24 book there. Um, the big winner, uh, I thought it was ASM 201, but it's actually Spectacular 22. Um, I paid $7.32 uh, for that book. Um, it was listed as a VF minus, but still for uh, fair market value, almost $26 for that book. Again, Moon Knight, I think, is driving that value, so we'll see if it cools off. But, uh, you know, from a fair market value perspective, from a raw book perspective, kind of all over the board. But uh, again, uh, when I'm placing these orders, I'm using this data to figure out, you know, am I going to pay uh, fair market value? And 185, maybe by the time, I mean, it's it's been, you know, several weeks since I placed the order. It's certainly possible that 185 uh, came down in value since the time that I picked it up. Um this happens sometimes where I'll unbox an order and go, why did I buy this? And it's just because uh, the book has dropped in value. Now, from a CGC graded perspective, um, this one's tough because I typically throw all nine fours on here. Um, so I guess I could go ahead and do that just so you can see. But I, I was not buying near mint books. But um, it's always fun just to see what if all of these books were nine four. And these are uh, older books. So... Um, you know, the CGC value on these, it's going to be crazy, um, even though I know I was not buying it yet. Um, $2,172.59. And then I'm going to do this real fast because I don't even want to look for too long uh, if, what if all of these were 9.8s, which they're not, but it, it's still fun. It, it's twelve over $12,000 worth of comics. The Batman 217 is ridiculous in a 9.8. So let's get rid of these grades because um, I don't have any... Uh, none of those, I think, are 9.8. Um, I think a fair grade it, to just, again, you see here, like, here's a 180 in a near mint minus. Um, here's a fine, very fine. Um, I, I just kind of want to average it out, and I feel like maybe a 7.0 is probably a fair average grade that's going to happen for this order. Um, so even from a CGC perspective in a 7.0, um, total uh, positive gain of $127.05. And what that means is if I thought all of these were 7.0s and I sent them all into CGC, um, those that actually had a CGC value in a 7.0, um, some would be positive and some would be negative. So um, some, some winners here, again, Batman 217, Captain America 114, those are great Silver Age books. Conan 17 is 100 bucks in a 7.0. Um, you know, so let's just look at these three for a second. <clears throat> it's it's again, it's it's the uh, it's it's not the hidden value, but it's the uh, potential value that if the the way that my analysis works is if the book at a particular grade has a a wider range for potential value value growth, meaning what could I do to this could, if if I were to press it and, and get a grade bump, or if I were to um, uh, have it professionally graded, even that process adds value to the book, assuming that it's a certain grade or above. So I look at those wider ranges, right? I want to see the books that have the most potential. So if we were to grade, let's say, uh, Captain America 114, and it came back a 7, <clears throat> it cost me 19 bucks. And then after all the CGC fees, I, I've, I've increased its value almost $40. Um, and what a great book to encase and display um, from 1969 to have a 7.0. It's amazing. Uh, so the, just kind of on average, as we're looking at, it looks like the most uh, valuable 7.0 would be that Daredevil uh, 81. And again, I paid $23. So this was um, the biggest, it has the biggest, uh, or the largest potential. Uh, at $67.46 um, in additional value. But I will say that it, it does make me um, feel a little weird to be talking about these books and, and values and grades and, uh, 
you know, I'm going to send these all to CGC and uh, I'm, I'm going to, you know, potentially ha increase my collection value and all this other stuff. Um, I, I do feel a little weird about it. Um, kind of the same, may maybe the same feeling that I hope that the speculators and influencers have, like when they're hyping and pushing books. Like, is there any guilt at all? Do you, do you feel bad? Do you feel like you're um, maybe looking at the books a little bit differently in terms of really just kind of taking a step back? And this story of Capco Comics and Professor Comics, like, it really makes me just stop and think about, um, you know, collecting books. And, and I had a really good friend when I was young, and we, we traded books, we traded sports cards, um, we went to the LCS together. Uh, I would always grab some of my books when I go over to his house and, and we'd hang out and read together and talk about the stories. I mean, there's, there's such magic there um, that it's hard to recreate here in 2022 with, with technology and everything at our fingertips. And there's part of me that feels a little bit guilty, feels a little bit bad, um, for even talking about these books with, with a monetary value or label or slabbing them. Um, I know it's part of what I do. It's, it's part of how I collect. So I don't want that to, like, I'm not going to have a separate bin just for these comics and keep them separate in my collection. They're going to go right into my collection. They're going to, they're all going to get uh, fresh bags and boards. Some of them will get, uh, uh, fullbacks. I mean, they're going to get the treatment and because that's the way I collect. And I would hope that uh, Professor's Comics, um, if he knew that his, some of his comics were coming to me and he knew how I cared for them, he knew the, the level of analysis and thought that I put into this and, and just the, the excitement I have about getting books like this, I would hope that he would understand. So I'm going to go with that um, and... It's, it's just a touching story, and I share it because, to me, that's the heart of comic book collecting. It's the heart of the community. It's heart of why we do what we do, and I just get turned off sometime with the other side, and I understand it's a necessary evil. I just wish we could hold on to more of those stories of just growing up with family members and friends and and sharing these great books and stories and art and creators and meeting creators. I mean, it's just, it's just such a great story. Uh, and I, it, it's just added an additional, I don't know, it's hard to describe, like a, just, it's almost like a, a, a transfer of some responsibility, right? Of, of almost like we as collectors need to carry the torch forward for people like Professor's Comics, who uh, they were doing it before we were. Uh, and we have to carry that torch forward and then pass it along to our future generations. So there you go. I appreciate you watching. Happy collecting. And see you next time.